I think most of us have a similar experience to the one that, about which Dwight spoke, because I think each one of us is looking for the answer to at least that one basic question, the question of where do I fit into this picture of life? And it's in the search for the answer to this question that some people turn to sex, trying to find a meaningful relationship. Some people turn to drugs, trying to escape the whole thing. Other people try to live by certain moral standards and by certain ethics. And by doing this, they hope to elevate themselves so that others will look up to them, and therefore they can have some kind of an identity with other people. But I found that a lot of people try religion. And by religion, I mean that you have the idea that God grades on the curve. You know, and if I could just do a little better than that guy next to me, everything's just going to be great. And this is the way I lived my life for 17 years. I went to church every Sunday. They talked about Christ all the time, but I never really listened. Because I thought I was putting in an hour of good behavior on Sunday, and I didn't kick dogs and beat old ladies, and I thought, well, there couldn't be much more to it than that. And then I got to UCLA, and my three best friends, who were all Jewish, joined Zeta Beta Ta fraternity, which is the largest Jewish fraternity on campus and, in fact, the largest fraternity on campus. Now, I'm not Jewish, I just look it. <laughs> but they had an open charter, and they had given me a bid, and my three best friends were joining, and I thought, well, who am I to argue? So I joined, too. At that time in the ZBT house, there were 102 of God's chosen people and the kid. <laughs> We used to sit around and these guys would fire all kinds of questions at me. Questions like, Dennis, do you really think it's intellectually honest to believe in Adam? And I'd try to explain to them, look, guys, I don't want to be an intellectual. I just want to be like all of you. <laughs> Actually, though, something really did happen from those question and answer sessions. I realized that I didn't have any answers for them. I didn't have any answers for my own life, and I thought to myself, well, here I am in the playground of the world, the college campus, and it's just about time to change my life. And there used to be two groups that would leave our fraternity house after dinner. There was one that went to study, and one that went with me. <laughs> oh, I knew some of you had been there. <laughs> well, we used to do absolutely anything but study, but I was fortunate all the way through UCLA. When I graduated, I was chosen one of the top 20 all-around students out of a class of 4,300. I was voted president of my fraternity, and no one's been able to figure that one out. <laughs> and I was in every organization in which I ever wanted to be, and then the worst thing in the world happened to me. I graduated. They handed me a diploma, and they told me that this beautiful world I had built around myself in four and a half years, yes, I the four-year program into four and a half. <laughs> oh, I knew you had been there, too. <laughs> well, about three months after that, a girl I was dating came running up to me and said, Dennis, how would you like to go with me to a Christian meeting? And I said, uh-uh. <laughs> I said, look, I tried that, and I just, I'm not interested in she insisted on going, though, and through a series of circumstances, mainly because I just didn't want to leave her that night. You know how it is, man. Well, I found myself in this meeting, and I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Because here were students, and many of them friends of mine, and they were talking about Jesus Christ. And they said that they knew him personally. And probably for the first time in my life, I actually began listening as people were talking about the person Jesus of Nazareth. And as I continued to listen that night, I was given a promise and a challenge. And I had never been challenged in this way before, and I've never been challenged in like manner since. And of all the things that they had to say that night, I can remember one statement which they told me Jesus Christ had made. And that statement is, Behold, or look, I stand at the door, meaning the door of your heart and life, and I am not. And he said, If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him. And that night they told me that if I were willing to open up the door of my life, either Jesus Christ would come into my life and change it as he had promised, or he was the biggest liar who has ever lived. And I realized that that was true. He promised to change my life, and if I'd allow him to come into my life and he didn't change it, then he was lying, and he certainly wasn't capable of being the one whom he claimed to be, the perfect God-man. Well, I kind of sashed these thoughts in the back of my mind for a while, and one day I was simply 
is sitting and comparing the characteristics which these students had said were becoming more and more real in their lives each day with the characteristics that I had in my life. And I realized that my life was falling far short. So one day I just said, all right, look, God, I don't know you're out there. And I said, I don't know if I can come up my But I heard the adoption of the Father by the way and changed their lives. And what do you do? Well, I was to come in my life and to give me all of those great things which he said I could have. And my attitude at the time was,
It's stopping us from having the best life possible right here on Earth. And it's stopping us from knowing just exactly where we fit into this picture of life. And everywhere the new folk have gone, we've wanted to be the fork in the road with the men and women with whom we speak. Because we want for you to know after tonight that you're either standing with God in the person of Jesus Christ or that you're standing separated from God. And Christ talks about the consequences of that. And in every single program, we give the individuals present an opportunity to express a willingness to meet Jesus Christ. And in just a minute, I'm going to say a prayer, and it's going to be something like this. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for dying for me. And I want to thank you for taking care of my sin problem. Lord, I want you to come into my life right now, but I don't promise you a thing, because I can't change myself in the way in which you expect. But I'm willing to allow you to mold and shape me on the inside, and to give me all of those great things which you said are mine. Now, some of you are sitting there right now and saying, Dennis, I couldn't care less. And some of you are saying, well, boy, that really makes sense. You're saying that if Christ really can give you all of those things, if he can give you the peace and the power and the purpose and the direction and that kind of love and all the other things which he promised, you're saying, I'd like to have those things. Well, if that's your attitude, you're saying, I would like to have those things in my life, and I'd like to invite you to follow me in this silently, right where you're sitting. But just remember this. It's not the words you say. Because words never brought Christ into anyone's life. But it's the attitude you have in your heart. And if right now, on the inside, if you're saying, I'm willing, then I'd like to invite you right now to follow me in this prayer. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for dying for me. And I want to thank you for taking care of my sin problem. And Lord, I want you to come into my life right now. But I don't promise you a thing. Because Lord, I can't change myself in the way that you expect. But I do want you to give me all of those great things which you said are mine through you. And I'm willing to allow you to mold and shape me on the inside. And I thank you for coming into my life just exactly as you said you would. If you said that prayer for the first time ever, Jesus Christ said that just now, just now, he sent his spirit to live inside you. Do you feel any differently? Oh, I doubt it, because Christianity isn't a matter of feeling, it's a matter of fact. And faith simply means taking Jesus Christ at his word. He said, if you open the door, you'll really be lucky if I come in. No, he said, if you open the door, I will come in. And he compares his spirit with the wind. And he says, the wind blows where it will. You can't see where it's going or from where it's coming, but you can see its effects. And if you said that prayer, if you continue to count upon the fact that Jesus Christ is in your life, you will begin to see the effects. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And without the way, 